Welcome to Brightly You Radiant Being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we share soul-driven advice and topics to help you live more brightly in mind, body, and spirit. Through sharing our experiences, friendship, and passions, we hope to impact you to step more brightly into yourself inch by inch. H A double L O double E and Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> I was torn between doing that and the this is Halloween. This is Halloween. We don't have copyright for either of these, so please forgive my terrible singing, but it's that time, it's our favorite time of the year. <laughs> it's our favorite time of the year. And so you know, we, when we were talking about it, of course we said Samhain, it's, it's Samhain. That's what we're talking about, but we also know it's Halloween it's both and are. it's, yeah, it's the same. I mean, they're both the same. Well, not, they're not the same, but they're on the same day. And Halloween is actually probably of all the Sabbaths is kind of the closest to what the what Celtics had in mind. The Celtics <laughs> had in mind. Um, yeah, I mean, when you think about the carved pumpkins and and Masks. even the 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 candles in the in the pumpkins, that's to lead the way, to light the way. Yeah, the masks. Anyways, I have a question for you, Tracy. Ooh la la. Yes. <laughs> what do you love? I mean, obviously, we both love it. What do you love about Halloween? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, ultimately, this is my time of year, right? Like, even if I didn't know about the Sabbaths, even if we didn't have our Americanized version of Halloween and trick-or-treating and all the different um, uh, events that you mention and ways to market, like it's fall in the Northern hemisphere. Um, so it's, the air is crisp, leaves are falling. Um, you know, it's just that autumnal experience. Yeah. Um, when I think back to being a kid, I, I know I was excited about dressing up in costumes. We had some pretty creative costumes and we were involved in the process and our mom made them and stuff. And, and I love those photos, but like, um, I think back to one of the little boys I babysat for. And when the first time we took him trick or treating, he just walked into people's houses because he didn't know <laughs> he was just little. And it dawned on me at like 16, 17 years old. I think that's actually what I like about trick or treating is peeking into all these people's houses and seeing how other people live, seeing how other people celebrate the holiday, seeing other people yeah. out. And out. When yeah. else are you invited, even partially, into strangers' homes? Yeah. I'm not and they give you things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really introverted. So when I talk about community, supporting my community, you know, um, we work for a, a resident based institution where we help people. Um, I do that from afar. <laughs> and so Halloween is probably the one time of year where I actually am excited to see the community gather as it does. So I'm a, I'm a relatively new homeowner and my first year here, nobody took or treated to my door. So in the second year, I didn't prepare anything, left lights out, and I took my niece and nephew who live out in the country and didn't have a neighborhood to trick or treat. I took them to like the boulevard near me that was known for it because I live in a traditional neighborhood. Nice. Yeah. And then my neighbors were like, we totally had trick or treaters. Where were you? (laughs) 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 So the last year I prepared for trick or treaters and I left out candy, but then because of the work we've been doing and the more I've been learning about it, I had a bonfire by my damn self. (laughs) <laughs> and did the traditional Celtic saw when so yeah. yeah releasing and, and all that stuff yeah. um yeah. but I I still love like I loved hearing the kids run around the street I loved the concept of sharing being scared but not really like in, in a safe right. way right people it was really interesting so when I took my nieces and nephews one of them has a nut allergy and it was his first time traditionally trick-or-treating um, and we knew going into it, he was going to have a hard time rejecting candy, right. Or like people only having the candy he can't have. 
And my sister, it seemed like she kind of wanted that as a learning experience and teaching him, teaching him grace and gratitude still. Um, but after a few houses or, you know, when everybody has Reese's because we love it, you know, he started to display his displeasure. I mean, he was yeah. like six or seven at the time. So it totally appropriate for him. But at first I was a little embarrassed and I felt bad for people and we were trying to make them feel better. But then the next year I realized those people learned from that. They had the colored pumpkins out that signified they were a not safe home to trick or treat at. That just gave me chills. Right? Oh, and so, I love it so much. But tell me, what color is there? It's like a teal pumpkin. And what I love about it is Target sells them now. Um, but so they oh. learned in that moment because they were also like, well, we have other candy in our kitchen. Like people were so giving and still wanted to like help him have a good time. And we were just like, nope, like this is how he learns. And this is his life. Like this is his life. This is what he has to go through. And and. And he's really good at advocating for himself now. He's like eight years old. And um, I don't know what trigger treating is, is like for him or if he still has a hard time or gets frustrated. But although his reactions were not as mature as I would have hoped, you know, or that you want to just, oh, no, thanks, you know, and then walk away. It had an impact, a lasting impact. And I also think society changing, becoming more aware and target having those things. Like it just yeah. kind of blended everything together. That's um, so great. I but it was it. just like Halloween, as weird as it is in America to go and knock on someone's door and ask for candy um, <laughs> is I couldn't imagine not doing it as weird as our holidays are. I still love that we have it. Um, yeah. I, that's how I feel too. I feel like Halloween is one of those, yeah, the candy companies and, and, and whatever really made it what it is. The, and gonna, I don't care. It's the social expressions industry, yes, which yes. I once worked in that. And when I heard that, I laughed social and then I found out it's a multi-billion dollar industry around decor and wrapping yeah. paper. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yes, I, I agree. I love, so I, I love it. I love it. And the main thing I love are the costumes Ooh. as a kid. I um, so I was born in 1958. So think about the 60s is when I started trick-or-treating, right? Okay. I would create my own costume every year. I would create my own costume. Like so and, create it, not just like decide what you want to be, but you would make it happen. No, no, no. I wouldn't sew it. I would gather things. Okay, yeah. And, and then create you didn't, like, this costume. go to the and, local piddly widly and just pick up a package. You like. Right, right. Yeah. So, so what's one of your, what's one of your top 10? No, no, you don't understand this story. <laughs> oh, oh God. you do not understand this story at all. So I created my own costume every year. Every year I went as the same thing with <laughs> different, maybe in a little different ways. I mean, so yeah, I you were went, the same thing. What did you go as? Right. So every year, and this is politically incorrect. I was a gypsy, but however, and this was before I knew that my grandfather actually was, I, I think it was in my blood. And I was like, this is what I'm dressing as. This is what I am. I was like the best dressed kid in the neighborhood. I had like, sorry, because of course I would never do this now fur coat and beautiful dresses and all my mother's jewelry and like a scarf around my head and she would clip on eat great big hoop earrings for me and oh it was fabulous so it was fabulous but no no I'm story's not done then one year I was like everybody has store-bought costumes I begged my mom for me to get a store-bought costume and I wanted Cinderella. Cinderella store-bought costume back in the 60s is not Cinderella store-bought costume of today, okay? Did it you want the maid or the princess? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the princess. It was, it was actually a plastic bag. It was like a vinyl with a little slit for your head to go through with a picture of the dress on it. And then a mask, the plastic mask over your face. I wore that costume 
And I too learned a lesson <laughs> that that store-bought costumes suck. And so I went back to being the gypsy for the next however many years. So for you, Halloween isn't a time to be something you're not, but it was when you were the most yourself you ever were. Yeah, but I didn't know it at the time. But yes, you are absolutely right. So I still love creating costumes, only now, like maybe I'll go to, you know, a thrift store and then meld things together. Um, but I hate to buy costumes. So uh, yeah, this year, um, not a gypsy. <laughs> I could be, but more than likely a witch. But I love everything, everything about Halloween. Now I haven't actually, for the last few years, we turn off all the lights because we get maybe four kids. It's not a lot these days. It really is. It's isn't. not. And with where our house is situated, um, they don't get the bang for their buck because there's no houses across the street. Mm -hmm. And the neighbors next to us, the corner house has their lights off every year because they, oh, why would you turn? Well, they go some, right. So why would you turn down the street? So that, but I, yeah. So that's unfortunate because it was such, it was so visceral. And then when my kids were little, I made, we, I, they never had store-bought either. I made their costumes and because it's Minnesota, it's, it I would like it. this. Is, oh, this is your jacket. You have a red jacket this year. You're the devil. I make horns, sewed them on, you know, his hood Jackie was a clown. I made a ruffle around hers. Like I would just, I, I had so much fun. Nathan one year as a baby was a bat and I sewed bat wings and stuffed them and then just sewed them to a hooded, a black hooded sweatshirt. So he it. just was like, <laughs> it was so, it. yeah. One of my favorite or most memorable costumes. So we're Minnesotans. So everybody talks about the great blizzard of what was it? 91. There was the, the Halloween blizzard. It, it was feet of snow. And we also, we were dedicated to trick or treat. Mm -hmm. So my sister and I, my older sister and I, we were princesses and I didn't realize this till older, but our costumes were my mom's old bridesmaids dresses. <laughs> and so it was these satin and silk dresses from the eighties with these long gloves that in the snow turned color. Cause you're not supposed to get silk wet. Right. Right. And so, you know, these dresses then morphed into these amazing things that we then played in. Um, but my little sister was a cowboy and we had this giant Samoyed puppy that she rode like a horse and <laughs> it got so bad that we were afraid people couldn't see him because Samoids just look like puff balls of snow to begin with. His name was literally Blizzard. And so we had to go home because we were concerned about the dog. Yeah. But like, I just loved, we were princesses or in my head, I was print a princess in this big fancy dress. And here my mom had just altered her bridesmaids dresses. And we felt like we were- Best costume ever. Right? And she, <laughs> she would make all of our dresses. I was a bumblebee yeah. once and I was going to suggest instead of a gypsy or, I mean, be a witch if you want to be a witch, but you could be a fortune teller. You already have the tarot cards and a crystal ball. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to do that outside though. I'm I, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do later in the show, but I have a plan. I just haven't shared it with my husband. So I need to, <laughs> yeah, have I need your to husband ever done know. like a group costume. So actually we used to do this every year. We had friends who put on a huge Halloween, uh, party every year. And it got to the point where it got so big, they would rent out a space to do it. And then there'd be donations oh, that would go to St. Jude's hospital and amazing. Great. Yeah. So every year, um, we would come up with a couple's costume. So one year we were Bonnie and Clyde after being Love it. Shot. So we had, <laughs> bullet hole. yeah, well, it's Halloween. It has to be yeah. bullet, holes. So <laughs> bullet holes and blood and stuff like that. The funny thing with that costume, I did the Faye Dunaway uh, Bonnie. Version, yeah. Yeah. And so I got a blonde wig with bangs and hair to here. 
and I put it on. And of course, people who don't know my mother won't understand this, but it literally, I put it on, looked in the mirror and went, oh, because it was. I was just going to say your natural aesthetic and your vibe would fit with that time period so well. Like I could see you as mommy even without a wig, but as soon as we were like, People who knew my mom, I was like, oh crap, she probably looked like her mom in, when, the, when she yeah. was in prime. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so that was really fun. And then another year we were, we went um, as a matrix couple. And then one year we were going to be vampires and we couldn't get the teeth to stick. They were really cool teeth. And so we had the pointy ears. So I said, we're just going to be scary fairies. So we were all in black with pointy ears. And that's <laughs> Lord of the Rings reimagined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyways. How well, outside many, of costume, what else do you like about this time of year? I Well, I love everything that you do. I love it that, you know, the tree, the trees are changing. The air is changing. It smells different outside. The actual quality like at night when it's sort of dusk, it's almost like the leaves when they're orange, it's like it leaks into the air, right? Leaks it's- and write poetry, Amy. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. it leaks the, leaf, the color of the leaves leaks into the air. It does. I okay, feel so like it does. Yeah. Why do you think, or what is it about how this time of year feels that we gravitate towards? Hmm. Like clearly there's a tradition weird. Yeah. Yeah. This is so weird because you traditionally, you used to always say to me, well, you know, Amy, Samhain is actually the new year. And I would be like, no, Tracy, I don't want it to be. And you'd be like, well, too bad, Amy. Well, not even necessarily the new year, but the end of the year, the end of the year. But I think what the weird thing is for me is that this time of year, October feels like a fresh start and that should be spring, but it's fall. Imagine, imagine that who else in the world at a certain period of time would have had that same thought. (laughs) Would it, would it, would it be the Celtics perhaps? (laughs) The Celtics. Yes. And many other cultures too, but the Celtics is what we're most familiar with and what we talk about on the show. So the interesting thing too, is with the word, with the name Samhain and you, just so everyone knows, it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. It looks like Samhain. Yeah, but it's pronounced Samhain. And in Celtic, in, I believe it stands for like end of summer or summer's end. I'll go with that. Yeah. So they did mark it. Many ancient cultures marked this time as the end of the year because, of course, it's the final harvest, right? Everything now, except for my freaking garden, which still... Anyways, I don't know why I'm upset. I should be happy, well, right? No, I don't know. My father came to my home today and looked at my backyard and was like, did you fertilize? I was like, no. And he goes, did you water this year? I was like, hell no. It was a drought. And he's like, it looks really good. I was like, look at that, Mother Nature. And so it's not surprising to me at all that like any plants that survived this increase in temperature and decrease in, yes. in precipitation this year course is going to keep going well in the fall. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yes. It's traditionally the last harvest. Um, so, you know, uh, think of two, like, uh, uh, other cultures tradition, but we think of Mexico when we think of the day of the dead, which mm-hmm. is the same time period. So you're, you know, you, you are, it's also a time to honor the dead now, um, yeah, because it goes that honors everyone who has died, but Samhain traditionally is the people who have died in this last year. Yeah, because we have Halloween and Samhain, which typically fall on the same day, and then you have the Day of the Dead or Dios de los Muertos. Sorry, I took I took French, and then the following day is All Saints Day. So mm-hmm. it really is like this celebration of our ancestors and the people mm-hmm. that have passed. Yes. And this magical time in which they say the veil is really thin, which is what I was getting to earlier when I was like, why do you 
think we both gravitate towards it. Oh, I yes. Wonder so if definitely. It's that I, I, I didn't feel. get that at all. I, I didn't really get there until just now either. So don't feel bad. <laughs> no, you're right. You're absolutely right. The veil is thinning. And and traditionally also, I am I feel like did one come before the other that they th- honoring the dead because this is the time that the dead can actually speak to us. But so when we talk about the thinning of the veil, it's like crossing over spirits, uh, energies, entities. Yes. Your guides, maybe you can get messages easier from your guides. Um, but I hadn't thought of that. Of course, yeah, that's so why. Many of these cultures is it's not just a thinning. So Halloween, how it's been translated in pop culture is ghosts, bad, scary, like you said, like zombies and vampires and all this stuff. But in all these other cultures, it's about our ancestors and being able to connect with them. Yes. And it's really about um, the thanking them, honoring them, inviting them into your life. Like it could be ancestors you've never even met before, right? Um, which is yes, I t- really love that idea. And, and there are so there's such simple ways that you can do that. I mean, we all have photographs of people in our lives or who were a part of our lives who are now gone. It's as simple as taking a photograph, putting it in a place that where you can see it, maybe lighting a candle next to it saying something to them, give them a cookie, or, you know, you could do something very simple. You can set a place for them at the table. There's people talk about, I, I would call it a silent dinner, but they talk about at this time of year to do a dumb dinner. And it just means not to talk and you're not talking, you're not speaking so that you can be more aware of any kind yeah, of it's, vibe it's that coming through. Word to mean deaf and mute, right? So it's as though mm-hmm. you can't hear or speak and it's as a way to, because typically you can't communicate with those from the beyond, right? And so it's acknowledging that they're there with you. And- but also if you're silent, you can be more attuned to mm-hmm. something happening around you, right? Um, Yeah, I've seen people use their altars or those silent dinners as a way to like make those people's favorite foods. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I grew up going to um, uh, one of my grandmother's homes and I couldn't tell you her favorite food to save my life. Don't know if I've ever seen her eat. Like I know what she would give me and my sisters because we liked it, but she was known for drinking Diet 7 Up with a splash of grenadine and brandy. And so last year or the year before, instead of a silent dinner, I made that drink and just put it on my altar in honor of her and her memory. I love that so much. (laughs) So I have done that, but then I've drank it (laughs) because I didn't quite get the memo. (laughs) And you're just, you're having you. Well, no, I had, um, I had my cousin passed away when he was a teenager. Um, and it was really sad. And you know, when, when that happens, he, I mean, he wasn't even in middle school yet. So you miss all sorts of milestones. So when his 21st birthday was coming up and his birthday was the day after Christmas, which just makes a hard time of year even harder. But also like that day, I, I even 10 years after his death still hold it for him. My whole life I've been like the 26th this is his day. I don't, I would take that day off before I'd take Christmas off from work. Right. To make sure that he knew he still got his birthday. But so I remember texting my sister a couple of days before uh, Christmas holidays I'm just saying, I really want to ask my aunt if we can, if, if we could go to the graveyard and pour one out for Brian, but I don't know if that's insensitive. And she goes, I think that's awesome. And I think they'll love it. So next thing you know, it's his 21st birthday. Um, his parents, his sister, me, my sisters, and my parents are at the graveyard. They're all having a drink, a toast. We put a drink out for him. We're wearing, we used to have memorial, um, ice fishing tournaments for him. So a lot of us are wearing the sweatshirts from that event. Um, And then his old football teammates found out what we were doing and still live in the area. And they all came out because most of them were 21 and brought beer and they all drank and everybody got drunk. Like we're my favorite photos of my family in life. And, And I think I'll post it to our Instagram and share the story there too when this post, but 
we're all standing around a headstone with alcohol and just cans all around us looking real happy. But it was just like, yeah. I wanted to honor not only him and this experience he didn't have, but also like the experience the people in his life lost, right? And I'm just, I'm so happy it worked out because I really did. It was like, if it's insensitive or if they don't want to do it, I'll just do it in my yard, right? Like time and space is, you know, it doesn't matter. But like, we got to have that moment and it was so beautiful. And like, now that I think about it, like I hold birthdays and certain holidays and I hold these people in my heart and my head all the time, but then especially at those times, but like, now I'm like a silent dinner. Why did I only think of my grandma? Like there's so many people that I've lost. Or even like I said earlier, yeah. like ancestors I've never even met before. I want to show them gratitude. Yeah. But what, also when you were talking about all these people in the cemetery, you know, having drinks and, and getting to know each other and having fun. Yes. I mean, that is what day of the dead is. Yeah. It's picnics and celebrations oh. in the cemetery. But so I, I mean, and candles and yeah, one of the yes. movies, uh, Disney has a movie called Coco. Oh, um, it's so good. It's so good. Aspects of it make me personally sad when, you know, in death, you might still have a caste system and like still yeah. have to be with all this family and still have yeah. like stereotypes put upon you and life on you. But like the not afterlife part of it, this, the celebrations, like you were just describing, like it was so beautiful to see how they made their favorite foods and the traditional foods and the yes. offerings and the, and, and how they honored people. And yeah. all of that is just as a way not to forget, but also to express gratitude and celebrate their life is so yes. cool. I love that. And I love that story. I can't wait to see that photo. Oh, so so I uh, uh, yeah. Post it. yeah. Yeah. Thank I you. love it. Another interesting thing. And I had not heard this before, um, until I started doing the show notes. And then as always, you know, we just kind of look up some things. This is also traditionally a time to tie up loose ends. And of course you think of tying up loose ends at like the end of the year, but since this is traditionally the end of the year, if you have a disagreement or are in an argument with someone, you want to make sure that that has been resolved by this time. If you have unpaid debts, now, obviously there are some debts that are just, you know, like, I mean, my student loan, I'm not going to be like, house, oh, it's I'm not going to pay that <laughs> off. But like, if you have forgotten to pay back your sister, $20, you need to pay it back your $20 that book you've been writing for ever, like maybe you want to finish that now. I don't is that, know. Is that, is that a little <laughs> passive aggressive? Maybe, maybe, maybe do you, is there maybe a specific individual you're talking to in this moment? Uh, <laughs> I will say, so what I love about the wheel of the year and these Sabbaths that we talk about and what this is, you know, this is the cycle is kind of ending. Um, it's so similar, this one, to Chinese New Year, which is traditionally in February. It's the yeah. Lunar New Year. But this just shows me, like, depending on what tradition you follow or where the moon's at or what cycle, every six weeks, you get a new start. Like, <laughs> so do your best to do all of this between the 31st of October and the 2nd of November. But if you're listening to this late or if you're just not in the space where that can happen... Hey, February, <laughs> like you can well, do it. Or, <laughs> or you will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we're having another show in six weeks. Yeah. And, and I mean, you, these are so many things you can do all the time. You can repay debts anytime and you can settle our arguments and stuff. But what I love around this is um, kind of the tradition or in the ceremony around it. And, and doing it with intention. And yes. but it's also, it's like this great release from yourself, right? That like this mm -hmm. is done and I do get a new beginning, right? Like that really concrete, this is the new beginning I want for myself, right? This is what I don't want to take with me. And this is what I do. Um, and then bringing your ancestors along for the ride, apparently. <laughs> hey, I listen, I love it. And now that I realize like that is why the candle is in the jack-o'-lantern. It's to help guide your ancestors. It's to help guide the spirits. And, and they do similar, talk about, hmm? I would say how similar is that to the paper lanterns in Japanese culture? Exactly. And also when you think about it, they talk about putting the, the candle in the, uh, 
in the window. And I feel like that's for another one too. Yeah. So around Samhain, or maybe it's part of the, the, the day of the dead, they have, um, a, a candle. I forget the name of it. It's like a 24 hour candle or it's like a three day mm-hmm. candle, but it's a, a candle in a glass jar, really similar to the ones that you see with the spirits and the saints on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're supposed to burn it in your window for three days to help again, guide everybody. That's why you buy a very specific type of candle that is more fire safe than others. Still, I still be a little. Yeah. The only year I've done it was 2020 (laughs) during quarantine and I couldn't leave my house. So I did do it. Um, but yeah, be, be safe with all of this or at least, but it's mostly, you know, at night, right. To the candles will light. Yeah. Yeah. So something that that we talked about. So even though we're talking about this, the end of the year, um, you know, that this is with many cultures, the end of the year, something else that this time of year is known as, (laughs) and maybe some of you have heard of this, maybe some of you haven't, it is known as the witch's new year. And I don't know how you feel about this. Well, I know how you feel about this, Tracy, but I kind of like that. That makes kind of, okay. I love it. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And of course the veil is thin, like we were talking about, but also this is, it's a perfect night for divination, for using those tarot cards, for using a pen pendulum for uh choosing runes if you've got that anything right um do you ever do specific divination on Samhain no I don't know I haven't either and I now I'm like what have I been doing with my life? <laughs> you know, I may have done some sort of tarot spread last year okay. um, or the year before, but it was more like a new year spread or, you know, or whatever, yeah. you know, I found on Pinterest that was, you know, claiming yeah. about Samhain, but I've mostly have used it for the reflective or for the community piece of it. I'm really new to celebrating it more in that um, thinning of the veil way that other cultures do, right? Like, Mm -hmm. so until three years ago, it was still very much that Americanized dress up, go out, get candy, come back. Yes. Um, And now Mm -hmm. it's, like I said, last year, I half participated in that and then went out and danced around a fire by myself to Fleetwood Mac. The Stevie Nicks, man, she's very appropriate for fall. Um, so how <laughs> she is. So, uh, well, I haven't, and and I'm like you. I'm like, what, what, why haven't I? Like, you know, obviously, inside of I, myself. The I past five it. years, I have a very concrete Yule uh, ceremony and celebration that I do, mm-hmm. and my um, the the summer solar eclipse. I'm uh, maturing in that area as well. (laughs) And then doing a little bit around the, um, or the summer solstice, excuse me. And then the spring and fall equinoxes I'm starting to get more into. Yes. Um, But then these, you know, Sabbaths in between, um, you know, cause they're, you know, Ostra in the spring and some other ones that kind of pepper in that I'm, I'm still learning how to like really capitalize on the energies and, mm-hmm. and then also, you know, give gratitude and celebrate yes. and go back for, to, to the history. Well, this year I want to surrender into the <laughs> celebration of what it could be. I really do. How are we going to do so, it? Well, um, so I, I think what I'm going to do is, first of all, I am absolutely going to honor ancestors. I'm going to gather up photos of the photos that I have of people that have um, passed on. And so I will have that. I'm going to have a candle for them. I am also going to take my broom. Someday I will post a photo of my broom that I have. Did you make I, it? I didn't make the broom. Rick actually bought me the broom. And then I 
blinged the broom. <laughs> so, so it's a very, it has a place of honor in the house. Um, cause it looks, I love the way it looks. And so I love it. And what I want to do is I will spray it. So, I, and I do this at other times, but I'm definitely going to do it for this. I will spray it. I'm probably, I'm going to look up the traditional, like what oils would be best for this time of year. When in doubt, you can always use lavender. That's just something, or you can use whatever the heck you want, obviously. Um, but so I'll spray the broom and then I will do a sweep of the house just to get those energies moving, any stale, stagnant energy out. I am going to bring, I've got a contained um, fire pit mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring, I want to bring it to the front to the to our driveway and then set up a chair and of course keep it back far enough so that no little kids will come up to it and obviously who knows maybe no children will come it'll just be you, me you're gonna attract cold adults <laughs> you're gonna make a lot of yeah. friends maybe <laughs> yeah yeah so I'm gonna have a bonfire out front and um but before I do the bonfire up front, now that I realize that I haven't done a tarot, I will definitely do a tarot spread. And who knows, maybe I'll bring my tarot cards outside and I'll do, and maybe I will be more of a fortune teller and I'll pull tarot cards if people want me to. I love it. The, so fun fact, um, kind of an old timey saying is to clean your house before or on the first of the month. And kind of similar to the whole idea of cleaning it before New Year's Eve, or you don't mm -hmm. want to take your dirt into the new, right? Your mm -hmm. literal dirt. Um, but you're supposed to use cinnamon to attract abundance and prosperity. Um, yes. And then washing your door with mint at this time of year would also do that. So I have done that with, um, I put mint in moon water oh. and washed my front door with you that <laughs> well and then the cinnamon I put cinnamon in my coffee every morning I do it intentionally right. um but I do have a spray I do have An cinnamon essential oil right. as well so that will work that. so do you think you could come up with something you know I love how you're trying to bring community to your front area I don't See, I'm kind of similar to you where like there's a main drag where all the action is and they're like known for giving out full size candy bars. Yeah. Or yeah. Bars. yeah. But then the road I'm on is it's peppered with uh, people who have lived here for 60 years and are in their 90s. And so they're asleep. It's dark. Um, asleep. Brand new parents who are out trick or treating mm -hmm. and then people like me who don't have kids. Right. And so it's like this mix of some of us kind of do our open to and we'll leave our lights on and I'll buy a bag of candy just in case, but it's not like a neighborhood that embraces, Hey, come here yeah, in a non creepy uncle kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> candy out of my van, little one. Um, yeah. there are a lot of people here just because of our restrictions with, um, our fire restrictions for burning where their bonfires are in their front yards. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think I'm going to keep an eye out to see what they do this year. And then maybe next year, move my fire pit to the front and see if that yeah. attracts Although people. your, your yard is a little, might be a little hard to do. I mean, just because of where I live with yes, yeah, you have a lot sidewalks and, and mm -hmm. we have a driveway. So, yeah. So, I mean, most of my, cell, my, my stuff around these Sabbaths has been really personal and really inward. I tried to yeah. do a day dead party one year and, um, and, and we had little, little kids who just weren't feeling it that day, hard transition days. And, the majority of the group didn't know what the day was and just wanted to hang out like normal. Right. And so all the stuff I wanted to, to do, the more witchy stuff, I was like, oh, this isn't my 
my group. <laughs> um, so I think maybe if you want to come out on the 30th, Amy, you can put this on a fire again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to think of something. You've given me a lot of good ideas. I know last year I really wanted to carve a pumpkin and then just between the weather and life, it just didn't work out for me. Yeah. Um, I, it has been years since I've carved a pumpkin. And I saw and a hot tip on TikTok today and I've seen it on Pinterest before, but you use a cookie color and a painter's mallet. And so you could do stars, you can do ghosts, you can do all sorts of shapes. And it really, I am is that clever. In. Yes, very clever. I'm sure it's probably messier and harder than they made it look, but I'm not you know it. As I've said before, I'm not that kind of crafty. So your girl will take a shortcut. <laughs> um, well, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you can embrace as clearly Tracy and I have Halloween and still be open to these other aspects and thinking of it in new and different ways. Um, and, and I think it's wonderful to bring kids along into that. You know, maybe you don't want to do a witch's new year with your kids. I don't know. Maybe you do. But, but you certainly a to honor. Loved one and, and, yes, and share loved memories one. about someone that they've never met before. Yes. Just, and to say, hey, this is a good time to finish something up and to clean your room. So. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, uh, what is it? You know, people talk about spring cleaning all the time. A fall clean before you're stuck in your house is life changing. Like, oh you yeah, have time of year to do a deep clean in your home, get stuff out, get stuff organized, get stuff really good before you have to close all the windows and batten down the hatches. To well, we're in a really cold climate, so I'm a tad dramatic to you know people in California listening. But for us, we're about to be stuck in our homes for four months or more. Yeah. Um, uh, at least if we want to be comfortable, there are crazy people who like going outside in the snow. I'm not one of them. <laughs> okay. I do love being outside in the snow, but the house is still closed up. And so I always do a deep fall clean. I do a deep spring clean. I do a deep fall clean, make sure my windows are sparkling inside and out. Mm -hmm. Anyways, enough about that. What the universe say? Let's let's look at what the universe said. Yeah, you fortune teller, so, tell us our fortune, Amy. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm doing the shuffle. What does the collective need to know about Samhain? And I don't get the card that I want. And here's the problem with Do we I'm ever? Gonna, I'm you gonna have I we know. Ever. Yes, we have. Yes, you have. have. You have. Yes. Okay. But here's the thing with me and Tracy is we're always like. Before we shuffle, I feel like both of us are like, I know what card I want and you're yes. going to give it to me. And so for this, I really, really wanted the queen of wands. I really which, wanted. Oh my God. Queen. Which if you listened, oh, I didn't share it in the last episode on air, but I got the queen of wands for one of them. And it's been haunting me all week in all my personal readings, YouTube readings, TikTok readings. Like even I'm not looking for readings and all of a sudden so you social media is like, Hey, queen of wands. And here I'm telling Amy this and that's what she wanted. I got your card. I'm I also know. on the show. So what <laughs> I did get was the five of wands. So the five of wands card. And in this deck, what I like about this deck is um, it's a little bit different. Well, first of all, they are kind of, they look like they're fighting, but they're not. They're in a competition. They're practice fighting. Oh, they're and on your card, they have like a pinata, but it's like a beehive. It is a beehive. So My card. So I have the traditional rider weight and you can't yeah. see what's in the sky above them, but maybe these guys are just at a party and we've been misidentifying them as fighting. Yeah, this is, and these guys, they're blindfolded with, with, their wands. So they're practicing, um, how to fight, but, but it can also mean like petty fights. Are you in a petty mm -hmm. fight with someone, right? You need to resolve that. Okay. It's also competition or at cross purposes. Cause obviously the wands are crossing each other. Do you need to come to consensus with someone? So I'm taking this card as more of like, what things need to be tied up? What loose ends do you have out there that could, if you let it continue, 
that beehive is coming down and those bees are really going to be mad at you. <laughs> so <laughs> don't let those things continue into this next season. Take care of it. And- Where can you just drop the stick? Oh right? my gosh. Drop the dang stick, right? Is- I love it. Yeah. Take the blindfold off and drop the stick. <laughs> so Amy, I want to go back way, way back to something you said earlier. Yeah. So you had mentioned you used to be a gypsy, which we now know today through the internet and people uh, advocating things that, that can be a slur. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the words I would describe you as if you, instead of, if you don't just want to be a fortune teller is moon child. Moon child. <laughs> oh, well, you dodged her the moon. That. I Be love a that. moon child this year. How about moon crone? <laughs> that little moon beam, whatever, whatever resonates with your soul. Moon, but there's moon divine feminine. <laughs> We're all children of somebody, even as grown ups. Yeah. But yes. I mean, you could just be a crone if you want to be a crone. But if you wanted <laughs> something magical and witchy. Yeah. That's I like that. Often. So speaking of witches. Ooh. Yeah. You just, get, to- you just, you just lit up like you did earlier <laughs> <Yeah>. today. <laughs> so uh, next episode, we are talking magic and witchery and everything. Explicitly from- and only. <laughs> Explicitly <laughs> and only. Everything from baby witches to Hecate. Um, and possibly Tracy's Hungarian witch guide. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has met her yet, but I will let, I, I'll talk about it. It's a, it was a weird thing to experience, but it totally happened and she's here now. <laughs> Love her. <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome but if this episode spoke to your soul please share it with a friend and if you have time give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate review and subscribe you can also reach out to us via instagram and youtube under the brightly podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com and with that we hope you have a bright and beautiful day and a very spooky halloween <laughs>